Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the course of real time embedded system. Today we are going to start another chapter. That is chapter number four titled standard single purpose processor peripherals. This is our lecture number 15 and in this chapter we are going to talk about the introduction of standard single purpose processors, timers, counters and watchdog timers. We are going to look at the pulse width modulator. We are going to look at the LCD controllers. We will look into the controllers of keypad, stepper motor and finally we will talk about analog to digital converters. As we know that a single purpose processor is a digital system intended to solve specific computational tasks as opposed to general purpose processor which intend to solve wide variety of computational tasks. The single purpose processor may be custom one that we design in chapter number two. However, some computation tasks are so common that standard single purpose processors have evolved. Now, an embedded system designer choosing to use standard single purpose processor to implement specific computational tasks as opposed to choosing a custom single purpose processor may achieve several benefits. These benefits are first, NRE cost will be low since the processor is pre-designed in case of standard single purpose processor. Second, the unit cost will be low since standard purpose processor is mass produced and hence the manufacturer can distribute the NRE cost. Okay, so that was about the standard single purpose processor. Now, using a standard single purpose processor also provide the benefits of general purpose processor. Performance may be faster for standard single purpose processor. Power may be lower and size may be smaller as we already discussed all these things. And all due to the fact that standard single purpose processor is customized for particular tasks. So standard single purpose processor is customized for particular tasks. Even if a general purpose processor will exist in a system, adding a extra single purpose processor can freeze general purpose processor for other tasks. There are of course trade-offs. If we already using general purpose processor then implementing a task on additional single purpose processor rather than software. So if you already have a general purpose processor and you are adding a standard single purpose processor rather than using a software this may add to system power size and power consumption. So in this chapter, we are going to describe the basic functionality of several standard single purpose processor found in embedded system. So we know that standard single purpose processors are off the shelf, pre-designed for common tasks, also known as, so most of the standard single purpose processors are known as peripherals okay and the serial transmission is another type of standard single purpose processor and finally we have digital analog converter so all of these a to d serial transmission all and peripheral devices are all types of standard single purpose processors so now we are going to discuss timers, counter, watchdog timers. So in order to get a better view, it's better to look this into your book. So timer is basically used to measure time interval. So timer basically measures time interval. So how much time has gone? How much time has elapsed? So this is why we use timer. Now to generate time output events. So you, we can use timer for generating time based event like whole traffic light green for 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds do something. So this is like timed output. The second thing that we can use our timers for to measure input events. For example, if we want to measure the speed of car. So after how much time we need to measure the speed of the car. So timer has basically these inputs and outputs a basic timer has a clock a reset to reset the clock 
we can have 16 bit counter we can have 8 bit counter the number of bits varies so if it is a 16 bit counter it means that it can go up to 65535 2 raised power 16 and it will count up to 65535 and this top basically tells us when the counter reaches to its maximum value that we can also say that there's an overflow overflow based on counting clock pulses so counter basically what does counter do it basically counts the clock pulses now let's consider that we have a clock period of 10 nanoseconds so 10 nanosecond clock period means that we have a clock frequency of 100 megahertz so if we divide 1 divided by 100 megahertz this comes to be 10 nanoseconds so the clock has some frequency and obviously it has some associated time period so we can directly find out the frequency by taking the reciprocal of this 10 nanosecond and the next thing is that we can count up to 20,000 clock pulses so at the time between button pressed we count the time that pass between first and second button press so what we want to do we want to count the time between the first and second button press so we know that the time is like 20,000 clock pulses between the first and second button press so if we multiply 20,000 clock pulses with 10 nanoseconds so because we know that clock period is 10 nanosecond and we know that 20,000 clock pulses are passed between first and second button press so we can find out the total time passed by multiplying these two which comes out to be 200 microsecond we know that since the timer counter can count up to 65535 so when this counter runs to the fullest it will give you the value of 65535 microsecond so a 16 bit counter would count up to now we multiply the total range of this into 10 nanoseconds so it it can totally count up to 655 however we are just counting towards 200 microsecond the resolution is basically your clock period here so the resolution is 10 nanosecond it means the smallest measurable time is 10 nanosecond now I have already told you about the top top indicates that maximum count has reached so wrap around means that we are going to reset this basic timer or we will generate an overflow signal so that was about the timer so let me recap that we use timer to measure the input events or to generate time output events so we have seen an example in which we want to measure the time difference between two button press so let's move on to next slide so if you see here it is almost similar to the timer so counters are just like timers the only difference that you see here is that we have count in as well as clock so what we can do rather than providing the count in we can use the input rather than the clock so in previous we have seen that we were using clock for this timer but here we can also use input signal rather than the clock so this mode basically selects it is just like a select line so we have like two inputs and single output so we select the mode that whether we are going to select the clock or we are going to select the input signal so if we select the input signal this is going to be counter otherwise it's just going to work as a timer and rest of the reset count and top are same so for example we want to count the number of cars passing through so count car passing over the sensor so we need an input rather than a clock can often configure device as either timer or 
counter so we can configure this device as a timer or counter okay so both are them are pretty similar however in counter we use input signal rather than timer so this is how the circuit of the or the block diagram of the counter look like so let's move on to next slide so in addition to simple timers and counter we have some other time structure so the one that is shown here this figure in the figure one is timer with terminal count so this is timer and this is terminal count this one you can see that these two 16 bit timers are connected in cascade or series so it is like 32 bit counter we call them cascade timers and this is our simple timer or we are using a prescaler and we are using a prescaler it means that we have modes here so we can select different values of prescaler in order to slow down the clock so let's move on to this first timer with terminal count so indicates when time desired time interval has passed so we use that this to indicate that desired time interval has passed we set terminal count to desired interval so this counter is running on the basis of clock and this is the stop time like terminal count so we need we set terminal count to desired value for example we need to set it to 5000 so whenever the value of this counter reaches to 5000 these two will compare a top signal will generate and this will reset so this counter will start again from zero so how we can find the desired time interval so this is pretty simple so number of clock cycles is equal to desired time period divided by clock period so it means that number of clock cycle into clock period we can find out the desired time so you need to remember this formula in order to find out the desired time okay now for example now there is an example for example to obtain duration of 3 microsecond from clock cycle of 10 nanosecond so if we want to obtain a duration of 3 microsecond from a clock of 10 nanosecond so we know that 3 microsecond duration is large whereas clock cycle is 10 nanosecond which is which means that 100 megahertz so if we simply divide 3 microseconds there is our time duration divided by clock cycle that is 10 nanosecond it means that we need 300 cycles okay so we set terminal count to be 300 okay so there is our desired value and after 300 cycle it will reset okay so I just told you that duration of clock is 3 microsecond where clock cycle is 10 nanoseconds so 3 micro divided by 10 nano it gives you 300 cycle now reset as well as inform timer interval pass so we need to reset as well as we need to tell the timer that time interval has passed now in cascade we are using two 16 bit counters in series so what happens that once it is done the clock will be provided by the overflow signal so overflow signal will generate here once this has reached to its stop value so now this top one will drive this second 16 bit counter and once this is filled this will generate the overflow signal so by cascading counters or timers we can increase our counting time or timing signal in case of prescaler why what's the purpose of this prescaler the purpose of this prescaler is to divide the clock so dividing the clock means that we are increasing the time period or we are decreasing the frequency so when we do so it decreases the resolution and decreasing the resolution is good like if we decrease the resolution it means that we can measure the smallest possible change and it also increases the range 
so it means that we can go to far better range so this is the purpose of prescaler and these modes are basically for example we we want to divide the clock frequency by two we want to divide the clock frequency by four so this is kind of a mux okay so let's move on to next slide so in this example we talk about the reaction timer reaction timer consists of led lcd and button as you can see and then there is a code that is written on the right side of the screen so what we want to do a reaction timer is an application that measures the time a person take to respond to a visual or audio signal or stimulus so what we want to do in this application in this application turns on an led so this application basically turned on this led then measures the time a person take to press the button in response and display this time on the LCD so this light will be turned on and the person will press this button and we want to measure the time that this person takes after when the light is turned on and then we will display the time here okay we expect reaction time to be in order of seconds so we want to measure the reaction time in seconds and we want to display reaction time to millisecond for precision we want to represent this time in seconds so what we would have to do obviously we need some sort of counter to measure this time or timer in this example we will use a microcontroller with built-in 16-bit timer so we are using a microcontroller with built-in 16-bit timer and a clock period is 83.33 nanosecond when we have a clock period of 83.33 nanosecond it means we have a frequency of 1 divided by 83.33 nanosecond which comes out to be 12 megahertz so we have a clock frequency of 10 megahertz now the timer is incremented once after every instruction cycle okay so counter is incremented after once after each instruction cycle and we know that one instruction take six cycles one instruction takes six cycle so six into clock period will give us this resolution that this is the smallest time that we can measure okay so this time will be this time will take to like what we can say for one instruction okay 0.5 microsecond so by multiplying it with the bit 16 bit timer there is 2 raised power 16 which is 65535 into 0.5 microseconds we will have the value 32.77 milliseconds so this timer can count or record up to 32.77 milliseconds with these specs however we want to go till 100 milliseconds so this seems that this is not possible if we are going to use this timer this timer does not have a prescaler we do not have a prescaler so that we can slow the clock frequency and we can decrease the resolution and increase the range nor it has any terminal count as we have seen in previous case that in terminal count we put the desired value and then the timer will count up to that desired value but it does have a top signal to indicate overflow but the timer that we are using here does have a top signal and we know that top signal is used to indicate the overflow and it also allow us to load into initial value for its internal count up so what we can do we can load the initial value for the count up from where the counter should start counting so what we can do here listen up carefully we know that timer range is smaller than our desired range so timer range is 32.77 our desired range is 100 milliseconds while its resolution is finer now however the resolution is 0.5 microsecond which is very smaller compared to this 100 millisecond thus we must somehow extend the range so we need to extend this range without the convenience of 
prescaler or terminal count registered. Now, so what we will do? We will set up initial timer value such that overflow will occur after one millisecond. So we will design a timer like the overflow will occur after one millisecond. So usually the overflow will occur after 32.77 millisecond. But we will design the timer such that the overflow will occur after one millisecond. So and then monitor the top output. So after one millisecond, we will monitor the top output signal of the timer to activate code that keeps count of the number of overflow. So you can see here that we have initialized our timer with this 63535, not with the value of 65535. So we have initialized the timer and then we are counting the milliseconds because what we will do, we will count the number of milliseconds. So this is configured code timer mode. So we are configuring the timer mode that is it is going to use the clock then we set count to ms initialize so it will initialize wait a random amount of time turn on indicated light so now the indicator light has started now start timer now timer has started while user has not pushed the button so as long as the user has not pushed the button it will count okay so if top if top means that if there is like overflow stop timer the timer will stop and we will what we will do we will increment this timer 63535 so set count to ms initialize start timer the timer will start and then we will reset top why we, we need to reset top after every after every one millisecond so once this is done, we will count millisecond. This will go back again here. We will check top. If top, then stop timer will stop the timer. We will initialize the uh, counter with 63535. Then we will start the timer and reset. So every time we increment the count to one millisecond, we are going to initialize our timer with 63535. Now let's see why we are using 63535. Why not using this 65535? So the number of instruction corresponding to one millisecond. So this is this is important. Like one number of instruction corresponding to one millisecond. So one millisecond divided by we know that our one instruction is taking 0.5 microsecond per instruction cycle, and we want to know that how many instruction are passed in 1 millisecond so 1 millisecond divided by 0.5 so 2000 instruction cycles so what we did we subtracted 2000 so there is a minus sign that is missing here so 65535 minus 2000 so we want our counter to start from here so if you add 2000 because after 2000 we will have 1 millisecond so we will start our timer from here. It will run, run, run. And after 65535, five, it will generate an overflow. And we will then count one millisecond. Again, it will reset and it will start from 63535. Five, and again, it will generate top signal. And then there will be two millisecond and it will go up to 100 millisecond. Okay, so the timer, the top signal will be generated like 100 times for this particular reaction time okay so that was about the reaction timer you can read it in the book it's elaborated very well there thank you let's move on to next slide so in this slide we are going to talk about the wash talk timer so most of the time we use wash talk timer to reset some sort of system after x time unit else timer generate a signal so we need to reset the signal uh, system after x time unit so this is important x time unit now common uses are to detect failure in system and to recover the system from failure and which is known as self reset and another common type of example for this watchdog timer is timeouts 
and we usually use this timeouts in ATM system. So for example, we have ATM machine with a 16 bit timer, two milliseconds of resolution, and then we have a time register value, which is X, and we can compute X from here. And for, we want to like reset watch dog timer after two minutes. So if the, if user is not performing any activity within two minutes, we will issue a reset. So let's first go through this diagram code and then I will explain you the whole phenomena like what will happen in an ATM machine. So we have an oscillator. So it, the frequency is here. Now after that we have a prescaler. So the frequency is getting divided and we have a clock signal that is relatively so slower than oscillator because of the prescaler. Then we have a scale register, which is a up counter of 11 bits. So it will count from 0 to 2 raised power 11. And after it reaches 2 raised power 11, it will generate an overflow. And this overflow will act as a clock for time register. And this time register is 16 bit. And then we have a check register. When check register is enabled, only then we will get the overflow. Okay. So once this time register reaches to its maximum value that is 65535, it will generate an overflow to system reset or interrupt. So we can see here, this is our main code. Wait until card is inserted. So ATM machine is waiting as long as there is no card. And when there is no card, call washdog timer. So it will run in washdog timer routine. Okay, so what will happen? Check register we will be 1, scale will be 0, and time register will have a value of 5535. Why we have this value 5535 in this register, not 0? Because we want ATM register to get reset after 2 minutes. So if you multiply 5535 with this 2 millisecond, we will get 131070 millisecond which corresponds to almost two minutes, okay? So that's why if we load this time register with this value, it means that we are resetting our system after two minutes. So this is when nothing is happening. Once the user has inserted the card, transaction is in process. If button press performs corresponding action, so corresponding action, we have done corresponding action. So, after that, once the corresponding action has performed and two minutes are gone, call watchdog timer. It will come here and it will wait for two minutes here. If the transaction has processed, it, it's okay. If watchdog timer not call every less than two minutes, interrupt service routine is called. So what will happen? If this is not called, if this is not called within two minutes, we will come here. Okay, so this is the thing and once we are here void interrupt service routine it will eject card and reset screen. So this is the thing once two minutes are gone this will be called. So this is what is written if wash dog routine not called every less than two minutes interrupt service routine is called. Okay, so that is like how ATM machines work. So let's discuss the inside detail of how to find out this X, which is 12000 milliseconds. So example is ATM timeout using washdog timer. In this example, a washdog timer is used to implement a timeout for automatic teller machine. Or ATM. A normal ATM session involves a user inserting a bank card, typing in the personal identification number, and then answering question about whether to deposit or withdraw money. Which accounts? Which account will? So user has to tell which account is used. Now, how much money will be involved? Whether another transaction is desired or not? We want to design an ATM such that it will terminate. So this is important thing. We want to design this ATM which will terminate the session. If at any time user does not press 
select button for two minutes so if there is there is no activity for two minutes what we have to do we have to eject the card it means that we have to call the interrupt routine in this case the atm card will eject the bank atm will eject the bank card and terminate the session now how this will happen we will use a watchdog timer so in order to do that we will do a watchdog timer we will implement a watchdog timer with the internal structure as shown in the previous slide an oscillator osc is connected to pre-scalar that divides the frequency by 12 to generate a clock signal so we're dividing the frequency by 12 to generate a clock cycle the signal clock is converted to connected to 11 bit up counter scale register so scale register is 11 bit up counter when scale register overflow so it means that if it is counted to 2 raised for 11 it will overflow it rolls over to 0 it will start again from 0 and it overflows output causes the 16 bit counter time register so it will it rolls over to 0 however it will cause the 16 bit time register count increments so there will be an increment in the time register if time register overflows it triggers the system reset so once the time register is overflow it means that if it has reached to 2 raised power 16 it will overflow and it will cause the system to reset or interrupt now to reset the watchdog timer check register must be enabled so whenever you have to reset the system the check register must be enabled then a value can be loaded into time register okay only then you can load the value to time register so new value will be loaded into time register when check register is enabled so we have seen that check register is equal to one and we are loading the value into the time register and scale register is zero when value is loaded into time register the check register is automatically reset so once the value is loaded the check register will become zero automatically if check register is not available, a value cannot be loaded into time register as we have seen in the code. This is to prevent erroneous software. So if there is some sort of error in the software, we can prevent this. Okay. So we will not be able to unintentionally resetting the watchdog timer. Now let's determine what value to load into time register to achieve the time out for two minutes. So what value we should load into the time register so that we can have a time out of two minutes so we know that the oscillator frequency is 12 megahertz time register is increment at every t second so what is the value of t so t is equal to 12 that is our uh, prescaler into 2 raised power 11 is our scale register into 1 divided by oscillator frequency that is 12 megahertz so 0 0.002 or we can say 2 millisecond so watchdog timer has a resolution of 2 milliseconds since so the minimum it can measure up to 2 milliseconds since time register is 16 bit register its range is 0 to 65535 and thus the timer range is 0 to 131070 milliseconds so if you multiply this 0 with 2 it will become 0 and if you multiply 2 milliseconds with 65535 so we will have 131070 so we can measure up to 131070 milliseconds which is approximately 2.18 minutes so just uh, what we have to do okay just divided by 1000 and 60 we will get 2.18 minutes okay because time register counts up because time register counts up then to attain the watchdog interval time x millisecond we load the following value so this is how we can find out the value what value we need to load into the time register so 1310 minus x y x because we want to go towards two point we want to go towards two minutes so what should be subtracted because this is going to 2.18 so we need to finish before so we need to find out the x if time register is not reset within x millisecond it will overflow okay figure 4.3 and c provide pseudo code for main routine and the watchdog reset to implement the timeout functionality of the atm 
we want the time out to be 2 minutes second so 2 minutes is 12000 so if you put time register to be 1200 so subtract these two values so x will become 11070 so we need to have x 11070 milliseconds so if we put x to be 11070 seconds the watch dog timer will reset after every two minutes if there is no activity so that was about the watch dog timers timers counters that's it thank you very much